Welcome back to Vintage Camera Digest. Today we're talking about entry level cameras and what exactly that means. So stay tuned. A couple of weeks ago I published an episode on the Yashica Mat 124G twin lens reflex and at least one viewer was rather offended that I used the term entry level when referring to this quite nice camera. But it was obvious that he and I were not thinking of the term entry level in the same way. And then it got me to thinking about what I do mean when I say entry level. So one of the things I do on a regular basis is teach community photography classes through the local university here. Now I've been doing that since the mid 1990s and it's something I really do enjoy. And one of the reasons I'm so invested in that idea of photographic education is that when I was a lot younger and beginning my photography career, I didn't have the same opportunity. And I really didn't have a mentor to help me sort out the useful information from the useless. So I try to be that person for anyone who wants to learn photography. I want to support my students the best way I know how. So when a new student or a potential student who is just starting out is asking me for recommendations on a good entry-level camera, there are a few requirements that I think a camera considered as such should have. First, it shouldn't be overly complex and loaded up with features that will just complicate the learning process. Second, the price should be reasonable. Thirdly, and maybe most importantly, it should be a camera that is capable of creating great photos and furthering their interest in the craft. Now that last part is important and I'm going to come back to that in just a minute. But finally, an entry level camera should be part of an overall system that offers great lenses and accessories that the photographer can use to continue to improve their skills. Now, on this channel, even though we're talking about film cameras, when I use the term entry level, I'm still considering those very same requirements. When I say entry level, I don't equate that with subpar or junk. Now, I've seen a lot of references in the past several years to the Holga camera being a good entry level camera for medium format. Well, I don't agree with that. In fact, I strongly disagree with that. A Holga or a Diana or any other plastic semi-useful camera like that is probably the least suitable thing for a beginner. And here's why I think that. An entry-level camera should make it easy to get generally good results, not harder. Let's consider modern cameras. If we look at the lowest tier of camera offerings, those marketed as entry-level, we'll see that most have a lot of automatic options. And why are they there? To make it harder to get a decent photo? Of course not. They're there to make it easier. It's a gateway camera that hopefully will inspire a user to continue to explore photography. Now, if we go back to considering if a Holga is a good entry level camera for medium format, we have to ask, is the quality of the images from that type of camera going to motivate the photographer to continue to explore that format? Well, I suppose if they have their expectations set sufficiently low, it might. But if your feelings on medium format are based on the results you got from a toy camera like a Holga, you're really going to be missing out and maybe dissuaded altogether. Now, back to my second requirement of an entry-level camera, price. And although prices on some film cameras do remain pretty high, most film camera prices are only a fraction of what they were when new, and they're certainly only a fraction of what you'd expect to pay for a contemporary digital camera. But film camera prices are relatively low, and that wonderful fact actually puts a whole lot of pro-level film cameras in the entry-level category, because they do meet all my criteria. They're not overly complicated, they're reasonable in price, and the potential to provide excellent results is there. So when I say the Yashica Mat 124G or any other camera I cover on this channel is an excellent entry-level camera, I just mean it can provide a beginner with great results without a ton of effort doesn't really matter to me at all to whom the camera was originally marketed. Just because a camera has great build quality and great optics doesn't mean it's only suitable for a pro. My point is this. If you're just getting started in film photography, there are a lot of great cameras out there that are perfect for beginners. And here are a few of my favorites. In the spirit of keeping the list short, I'm looking at cameras that usually sell for around $250 or less. So first, we have the Olympus OM-1. 
excellent manual camera only needs a battery to power the meter. The required mercury battery isn't available anymore, but there are replacements. The camera is small and has a large and bright viewfinder, and there is a good selection of great lenses available. My only gripe with this camera, and you've heard me say it before, is that there's no exposure information such as selected shutter speed and f-stop displayed in the viewfinder. The Minolta SRT series. Definitely one of my all-time favorites. The first model was the SRT 101. It's a fully mechanical camera. The battery is only for powering the meter, and it's also supposed to be that mercury battery. But again, there are replacements. Uh, there are tons of great lenses for these cameras, and the prices on this series are quite reasonable. The SRT 101 will show you shutter speeds in the viewfinder. The SRT 102 will show both shutter speeds and f-stops. The later models, the 201 and 202, are slightly upgraded internally, but otherwise almost identical to the 101 and 102 siblings. Now there are some others such as the SRT 100, 200, MC, and SC versions. And these are lower spec and don't show any info in the viewfinder at all. My favorite of the bunch is the 102 since it has a nice mirror lockup feature. The Canon FTB. It's another good mechanical camera that only needs a battery for the meter. And guess what? It's that mercury one. Anyway, the shutter and aperture information are both displayed in the viewfinder. The Nikon FM is another great manual camera from Nikon. Not built to the standard as like the F2 or the F3, but not many cameras are to be honest. Uh, the FM is a fantastic camera though. The prism isn't removable, but that's seldom a deal breaker, I think. Uh, and you get to use all that great Nikon glass. So far, all the cameras I've mentioned have mechanically controlled shutters, but there are a lot of great gateway cameras that use electronically controlled shutters. The Canon AE-1, probably the most famous camera Canon ever made. And there was also an update to this in the early 80s with the AE-1 program. Both offer differing degrees of automation, but still make use of the great FD mount lenses. Both of these cameras will show you f-stops in the viewfinder, but no shutter speeds. The Nikon FE. This was released as a sibling to the manually controlled FM, but since it features electronics, it offers aperture priority exposure in addition to manual, and all exposure information is in the viewfinder. Now one I don't have out here right now is the Minolta X700. This was my first real camera. I got it in 1986 maybe. It offers aperture priority and program auto exposure modes, a full information viewfinder, and uses the MD and MC mount Minolta lenses. However, if you intend on using this camera in full program mode, you'll need to get the MD lenses and not the MC. The Olympus OM-10. So this camera is small, just like its older sibling, the OM-1. Uh, it features an aperture priority auto exposure mode, and mainly it's an auto exposure camera, but there is a manual adapter that you can get for not a whole lot of money that will turn this into a manual exposure camera as well. And of course, it uses the line of uh, great Olympus lenses. For medium format cameras, the prices tend to be a little higher, but I'll stand by my early assertion that the Yashica Mat 124G or any of the Yashica Mat series are great ways to get into the format. You can also go the route of a folding medium format camera such as the Mamiya 6. You can find good working examples of these cameras for the price of one of these 35s probably. They're a great value. The fact is that there are a lot of film cameras out there that fit my requirements for entry level. We just need to move on from the idea that an entry level camera has to be less of a camera. So what do y'all think? What would be the perfect entry level camera in your opinion? These here are just some of my favorites and there are others that would be great ways to start out too. But which ones would you add to this list? Be sure to let me know in the comments. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and be sure to subscribe. Coming up very soon, I'll be featuring this beauty, the Zeiss Icon Super Iconta. Just back from an overhaul and shutter adjustment. This one's gonna be fun. I am looking forward to shooting that six by nine format. I'll see you next time.